We all love 3D printing, right? But what if I told you, you didn't have to be constrained to such a small build platform? What would you print? So out of all my 3D prints so far, I would have to say the largest one was this multi-piece automatic cat feeder. But today, I'm gonna blow that print out of the water. So how are we gonna print bigger than this little build platform? Well, that's where the Creality CR30 print mill comes into play. So in my last video, I did an unboxing and setup for this big tank printer here. But in this video, we're really gonna put this thing to the test. So what's so special about this print mill? Well, basically it has a built-in conveyor belt. So technically we can print something as long as we want. Honestly, the room at this point becomes the limiting factor. So back to my question, what would you print? Let me know in the comment section down below. For me though, the answer was obvious. I've always been a huge Legend of Zelda fan. So obviously I had to print a huge master sword. Alright, so the first step here was getting the Master Sword model pulled into the Creality Slicing software with this infinity long belt. The original model was just a little bit too wide to fit on the belt, so I scaled it down to 85% so that it would fit. Now we can see the model fully sliced up here, almost 3,000 layers, and it says this is going to take about 25 hours to print. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's kick off this 25 hour journey. And even though the print started off pretty smooth, it wouldn't stay that way for long. So I woke up in the morning to a clicking noise coming from the extruder and it turned out to be a not so wonderful nozzle jam. And sure enough I pulled the filament out of the extruder a little ways and I saw it was all crinkled up indicating that the extruder was pushing really hard on it but it was not coming out the other end. So I ended up doing a couple of cold pulls to clean the nozzle out then I reloaded the filament and started the print again. Well unfortunately I didn't find that nozzle jam soon enough and it really did some damage. So we got a clear break in the sword there where the nozzle was clogged. So I'll probably let it print a little while longer and see if it can uh, finish out. If not, if it comes off the bed, I'm probably going to have to stop the print. So I thought this was interesting. This is my first long print and finally getting to the point where the purge line is going around the belt. But unfortunately, it's not uh, deep handling itself. So this might be an issue if you want to print a lot of prints in a row and that purge line actually made it around the belt back to the beginning, the printing head might start printing over top of the purge line, which is not what you want. So if you want to do really long prints where you're continuously printing, you might want to find a different way to purge or just remove the purge line altogether. All right, we're starting to get pretty deep into the print here and the sword is officially hanging off the edge of the bed. Pretty exciting stuff. What's not so exciting though is over here where the nozzle got clogged, the break in the sword, um, it did start printing again, but when it started printing, the edge of the sword is curled up, so that's going to cause some problems later. So here's the print now. The sword completely cantilevered off the edge here, which is awesome. So I'm super excited and I'm super disappointed. It started to print the handguard at the bottom here, and the right side is going all right, and then the left side has completely failed. Ah, oh, so this is the challenge here. So I think I'm going to try a super risky move. I'm gonna see if I can take this piece of the sword off. Okay, that worked and use it to jumpstart the missing area of this handle here. Otherwise, this part of the handle is just going to be missing forever. So let's hold this here and see if it works. Well, uh, something's on there. It might have worked a little bit. Let's keep going with it and see what happens. Well, it looks like my save appeared to work. Now it's got some support material printing on the bottom of the broken sword. Here we are, 25 hours into the print. We should be about done right now, but we're not. We're just getting into the handle. When we look over here on the LCD screen, it says we're only at 44%. Wow, I hope that's not true. All right, we're at 94% of this print, so we're almost done with the Master Sword print here. This morning had another nozzle clog. Luckily, I caught it right away, so the impact wasn't too much, but it looks like there's gonna be another weak spot there in the handle. So we'll check this out once it's done. All right, and here we are, finally finished up with the master sword print. Um, I'm gonna see if I can pull the front end of the sword off. 
So if this was still attached, it would be sticking out this far from the printer. Pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and de-panel the bottom of the sword here. Oh, there we go. Wow, that is pretty awesome, except for the being broken part. So we ended up here with a total print time of 38 and a half hours, about 50% longer than the original estimate. All right, let's have a post-mortem on the Master Sword prints. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So first of all, the best part of this is this print is bigger than my arm. If it wouldn't have broken half, it would be huge. I mean, I could never do that on a standard type of printer. Now for the bad. Really the worst thing is the clogging of the nozzle. There was a nozzle clog that happened here and basically split the print into two parts and kind of ruined the whole print. And what's even worse is after I fix the jam, this edge here start to curl up. So even if I connect these, the master sword is going to be bent. It's not even straight. So that's mildly frustrating. Additionally, I had other areas where it was trying to clog up again, like here, you can see it through. And then down on the handle, uh, I had a pretty major jam here and here. So that was kind of unfortunate. Had to pretty much babysit this print as much as I could. And not to mention, I used a brand new filament spool on this because I didn't want any trouble. So dealing with those jams is really not fun. Something I'll have to learn about more and how to fix that in the future. And another part that was pretty bad is in the slicing software, there were some pieces of the support material that were basically in midair. And yeah, I mean literally hanging out in midair. I mean, how are we supposed to print that? Come on. And then we've got this little guy just hanging out here. Maybe this one's printable. Is this what bridging looks like on a belt printer? I'm not sure. And then to top everything off, we've got this. For some reason, the slicer decided to cut the sword in half here. Luckily, this one didn't show up in the print at all, so got lucky there. So yeah, I'm finding out this slicing software definitely has some bugs, and you really got to review it before you set out on a major print. Okay, so enough of the critiques about this print. I'm not going to throw this thing away. So instead, let's talk about how we're going to get this print put back together. So this is a long print. I don't think I can just glue it back together. So instead, for stability, I'm going to add some steel rods inside here to give it some extra strength. Luckily, with the way this infill is set up, there's these nice cavities that I can just slide the steel rod into. And just like that, we have our steel reinforced sword. Next up was to solve the warpage. So my plan here was to get a steel plate and set it on top of the sword on a flat table. Then I used a blow dryer to heat up the part enough to get it soft, and then I pressed it down in a flat position and let it cool down. And then finally, I did some old-fashioned 3D print welding. So I heated up a soldering iron to 200 degrees, and I used the same filament as a filler material to weld the two pieces back together. And now the two halves of our Master Sword are whole again. It is a good thing I have the battle damage version of the model here, so that way a few of these blemishes might go unnoticed. I didn't mention it before, but this part had a lot of zits from the printer, so we're going to go around now and clean those off with a razor blade. Now it's about time we add some paint to bring this whole look together. I'm adding some blue acrylic paint to the handle. This is the first project that I've painted, so go easy on me in the comment section. And last but not least, let's add some yellow paint to highlight the gem and the trim pieces on the sword. And here is the final result of the Master Sword print. It's definitely not professional grade, but considering all the problems I had, I think it's not too shabby. Well, I think we're going to call that a wrap on the video here. I'm really happy with how this Master Sword turned out. It's my biggest print I've ever done. It's the first major print on the CR30, and it's the first print I've ever painted. So a lot of first times here, guys. I'm happy to share it with you, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Until then, we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions. And for anybody still interested, I did find some solutions to some of the issues I had during the print. The biggest change I made here was actually cutting the model in half and printing it in two halves. This way you can completely eliminate all the support material, which is causing so many issues. So in this first print here, I still struggled with the nozzle clogging a couple times and actually broke the sword in one place as well. But for the second print I did, I found I was able to solve this by increasing the printing temperature to about 208 degrees. So I think I'll have to do some temperature tuning on the machine down the road. So now printing the sword in two halves like this, I would have to glue them together after they're finished. These printed out as two 18 hour prints, so actually the print time was basically the same as what I did before. And of course I encountered some new problems with these prints. At the end of the sword, the layers got shifted up. 
This actually happened in the same position on both prints even though they were sliced separately. Somebody in the comment section mentioned getting rid of the cheap SD card. Um, maybe that was the cause of this. I'm not too sure to be honest. And then bed adhesion is still a problem at times, so I struggled with that a little bit on the handle portions here. But overall I'm still learning how to use this printer and still working some of the bugs out of it. Stay tuned for more printing projects from this CR30 in the future.